Yeah, so, and if you believe that, I have some <laughs> land for sale in the Obi, the Nogi. Yeah, in the swamp. Now, guys, obviously that's BS, but that's kind of the humor that Paul and I have. However, Paul did alert me to something, and this is very serious. A while ago, during the COVID era, Paul was cutting my hair, and he said to me, you know, we are talking about statins, and I said, look, I've, I really have no use for statins, other than if you have shares in the, in the company that sells them. But then Paul said to me, you know, what did you tell me, Paul? What did you say? Um, I remember that conversation. Uh, we were talking about statins, and I said, I can tell when somebody's been put on a statin. How, how, how can you tell if they've been put on a statin? I can feel it in their hair. And, and seriously, this is, this is very serious. What do you feel in their hair? So over, over all the years I've done hair, and it wasn't probably until my father was put on a statin that I really was said, okay, this is the thing. Uh, people would come in and they tell us all the time, uh, doing what I do, they tell us like, certain things create hair loss, certain things create this, it could be medications, ask your clients if they're taking new medicines, whatever. But what I noticed is the most common answer I was ever getting was, I've been put on Crestor or I've been put on some sort of a statin drug. Uh, and literally in one month, what I will see in a customer, and I'm talking four week customer, somebody I see every four weeks, usually women. Um, I would like to see you every four weeks. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with that. Okay. No, but that's true. Every four weeks, I see these women, and uh, literally in a four week period, somebody would come in, and about 40%, 30 to 40% of their hair is gone. Wow, really? Gone? Gone! Like they have lost 30 or is 40% it of their I mean, hair. Do they have a little stuff, or is it just a bull patch? No, it's gone. Like that wow. hair is just completely gone. There's no little tiny hair, there's nothing right. left. It's just gone. And the hair that's remaining. Right. Feels like straw. It's dry. It's brittle. Wow. It has no sheen to it whatsoever. Well, that's because the statin decreases LDL and decreases cholesterol, and your fat's gone from the hair. And I imagine that was wow. the case, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes that is makes all the sense in the world. But well, I, you see again another side effect of this. But this, and this, folks, this is genuine. There's no bridges for sale. Yeah, the hair is not getting any sort of moisture from any sort of. Wow. All the fats are being absorbed yeah. out of their body through this drug somehow. Wow. But yeah, they lose all their hair. And if, have you had anybody that stopped taking a statin? Does it come back? Yes. Wow. It, it will okay. come back if they stop taking a statin. Interesting. And I will tell people all the time to at least ask their doctor if they can get on a different statin. Right, right. Try a different one if, if your doctor won't allow you. And to certainly we don't, we don't see any benefit to statins in our patient population. So... Uh, wow, that is interesting. That is, and again, you shared that with me before, and I've looked at that very carefully. But here, folks, you hear it from the guy that's in the trenches that's handling hair all the time, and that's a genuine statement. Wow. So, Paul, the other thing that blew me away is you had a, a you know, you're not a medical person. You're not a as close as you come as being a barber, but, but you're a stylist. But um, you had a, a great theory, and I'll tell you, I completely, from a science perspective, from a biology perspective, agree with this. You had a great understanding of what does cause hair loss and how people, especially women that are concerned about hair loss, how they can reduce that risk. Won't you go through that story for me and won't you, won't you explain that? All right, so it's a little bit of a, sometimes I will actually draw this out for my customers just because I am a- I've got very smart patients. You can just- I'm a visual learner, so right. sometimes I'll draw it out. But Basically, if anybody's ever grown a bulb plant, your okay. hair is a bulb. Each follicle of your hair grows out of what's called a bulb. And that bulb is fed by the blood flow in your scalp. Okay. So just like a plant. So, so wait a minute. So a hair, a rock, hair is a living organ. It's, it's alive. It needs blood flow. It needs blood flow. Okay. It needs blood flow in order to grow out right. of its bulb, so to right. say. So there's a bulb and a little hair comes out of this bulb. Okay. Just like a, 
As if you're Rob, you would say right. plant. Plant, plant. I say yes. plant. Plant. Well, you don't speak English. <laughs> I say plant. You don't speak plant, English. Plant, plant. Plant. Anyways, okay. plant, plant. Uh, just like a plant, a hair grows out. Right. Two sort of little vein, little roots, little, little, little plugs, yeah. things hang down from the bottom of this bulb, and it's fed by the blood. And in, in my language, we would call that blood vessels. Blood, blood vessels. vessels. A vein, an artery, yeah. a little arterial, a little venule. Yes, a capillary. A capillary. No, capillary. Okay. So <laughs> they hang down. Okay, so take it from Is there. It capillary? Rather capillary. Than capillary? Yeah, capillary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyways, ca capillary. Uh, yes, yes. The... Uh, Needs blood flow, the capillary, capillaries, if you're in America. That is blood flow, yes. It needs blood flow and... So this little hair follicle requires blood to grow. And if you okay. don't get blood flow, that follicle will shrivel up, skinny out. It'll get really skinny at first, it'll become really fine hair, right. instead of a nice thick hair. Okay. It usually happens around here, I don't know why. Hey, don't touch my hair, doesn't fall out, don't right. touch it. <laughs> and, and then it'll fall out. But, so the best thing you can do is just like what the old ladies used to do back in the day. Brush your hair with a brush. Right. A hundred times a day. Brush your scalp. Brush your scalp. If I were to brush your scalp right now. Right. A hundred times on this side of your head only. You would feel this side of your head get super warm. So this, that's an increase in blood flow. Increase in blood flow. This side stays cold. You increase the blood flow, you're doing the best thing, feeding that wow, hair. Okay. So if you encourage blood flow to your scalp, you improve the vascularization of those hair bulbs, and the hair, you don't lose the hair and it continues to grow, or if you've got new hair growing, the new hair is going to grow like watering a plant. Absolutely. Wow, okay. So you don't need all these expensive gimmicks, the biotins and the neutrophils and all the wallet biopsies, as, as I call them. And as I, I got you to call them, you need mechanical stimulation of your scalp. What about massage and that kind of thing? Would scalp right. massage, that kind of thing work? I would imagine it's about the same. Probably. All right, I'm going to talk to Janae about that. That's going to be a nightly thing if she doesn't want a bald husband. She had to do something. <laughs> so, but uh, that is that, you know what? Scalp and, and massage, baby. From a medical perspective, that is very, very plausible. Now, the question for me is... Obviously, in the obesity space, how does insulin, insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance affect that? Well, clearly what we're dealing with is vascular issues, especially in the hyperglycemic people. Hyperglycemia affects blood flow. And that's a very, very important consideration. So there's the connection. Incredible. So I'm going to pass that on to some of my folks. And quite frankly, hypoglycemia, hyper, high ER, high blood high sugar. Per. Absolutely. High blood sugar affects blood flow. It does. That's what we see in cardio. In, yeah, absolutely. The cardiovascular system. And it also affects, you know, the other, the other interesting thing, Paul, it's not just the blood flow. The, there are nerves, little micro nerves, little small nerves that regulate the dilation or the constriction of every blood vessel. And we see peripheral neuropathy in people with hyperglycemia, with diabetes, and that's damage to the nerves. And if the nerves get damaged, it damages the, the regulation of flow to certain parts of the body. So that is, I'm going to have to explore that, and I will think that through. I'll put the science behind it. But what you've just said is very, very plausible. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And clearly from the, from the other side, from the side of the, of the, shaver and the scissors you see the evidence huge that's a big deal okay so you've given you've given a lot of my because i get this question all the time hair loss hair loss hair loss um what about people that have gone through chemotherapy if somebody if a woman has gone let's say she's got breast cancer she's gone through chemotherapy um any recommendations when they come off the chemo when the hair is growing how do you handle that early hair growth any Anything from the hairstylist perspective that you do? 